Hello and welcome to another screencast about the Unidata Integrated Data Viewer. In this screencast we're going to be exploring earthquake data and specifically earthquake data that's in CSV format or comma separated value format. Now before the start of this screencast I went ahead and downloaded and installed the UNAVCA the UNAVCO IDV plugin. I'll give instructions on how to install that plugin in the comment section of the YouTube video. Okay, let's go to our dashboard to load up that data. And I'm going to go to the Data Choosers tab. And since my file is just on my local file system, I'm going to select the files over here. And I'm going to select this data.csv, which contains my earthquake data. All other choices that you see here should be fine and especially the data source type of I'm feeling lucky should be adequate. So let's add that data as a source. Okay, here we're presented with an interface that's going to allow us to define our metadata for all of the columns in the CSV data. Since the first row is not really all that useful to me, I'm going to skip it so that we can start defining our metadata. And in particular, we're going to start going through all the different columns, the time column, the latitude column, the longitude column, the depth column, and I happen to know that this is magnitude. So let's go ahead and define those in more detail. So I'm going to select this column for as time. And I'm going to select a date format that is down here at the bottom. Now, I've already scrutinized these data before the screencast. And I happen to know that this one, the third from the bottom here, is the best choice. Although we do need to alter it a little bit to take into account the milliseconds that are in the data. So I'm going to add the millisecond part to the date format. Okay, next I'm going to select latitude in degrees, that's fine. Longitude in degrees, that's fine. This is going to be altitude or really depth of course and I know that these data are defined in terms of kilometer for the depth and you need to do this trick in the IDV so that it recognizes it as depth data you actually need to scale it as minus one to have the IDV recognize it as depth data and I know that this column is the magnitude column and I'm not going to provide any units here now I'm going to save these metadata because I may need them in the future. And the way I'm going to do that is by clicking on this preferences button. And I'm going to save the current metadata choices. And I'm just going to call this CSV3. And I'm going to click OK. If you were to load up these data again, you could avoid having to redefine these metadata fields by going to the Preferences button and choosing the CSV3 format that we just defined. Okay, let's click OK. That action will take us to the field selector of our dashboard. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the point data which is under grid uh, which is uh, defined right here at the bottom of our list and we are going to just to get our bearings we're going to display the data list so we're going to go ahead and select that and we are going to click create display so we have our time field our latitude longitude and our altitude we also define a magnitude, so let's go ahead and grab that by clicking on this Select Fields button and selecting the magnitude and just adding that and clicking OK. Alrighty, so now we have all the columns that were read in uh, from our CSV file. We can actually click on the top of this column to sort the data if we want. So we can get an idea of the range of our data in the time dimension at least. And it 
looks like it goes from 2013 to 2015. So when I click on the top of the column there, it's sorting it uh, from ascending to descending or descending to ascending, depending on which click I'm at. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to display our data on a map. So again, we're going to select the point data, but for the display, I'm going to choose point data plot. Everything else looks good, so I'm going to click create display. And I'm going to see what I have in my map. So the first thing I notice is that I have a lot of time steps. So that's a little bit awkward to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and play the movie. And also, you can just barely see it, but there's this cross here moving along as I play the movie. But that's just really hard to see. So we need to do a better job with our display of displaying some, um, a layout model that's a little bit more legible or can be more easily seen. And we're going to work with the data and the time dimension in a way that's not quite as awkward. We're going to bin the data uh, in a certain way to make it easier to deal with in the time dimension. So let's pause the movie and we're actually going to delete this display by clicking on the trash button right here. Let's go back to our dashboard and make the fixes that we just described. So we're going to go back to our field selector and we're going to bin the data in the time dimension by right-clicking on the data sources and going to the Properties menu item. And under the Properties tab, we're going to change the bin size by clicking on this little calendar icon. And I'm just going to change the bin size to be 30 days. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK again. And once more, we're going to display our data on the map. OK, and so we've been the data in a way that's a little bit easier to deal with, but we still have the problem that our layout model is just really difficult to see in this map. So let's go ahead and alter that by going back to our dashboard. And the way that we go back to our dashboard here is we're going to click on this link here, which is going to take us to the control for this display. So let's go ahead and click that. And one of the choices here under displays layout is going to be this little chevron symbol. And we can go ahead and click on that chevron symbol and select a layout model of beach balls. Now these layout models are actually part of the UNAFCO plugin. So if you're just running a regular IDV without the UNAFCO plugin, you may not see these layout choices. Okay, so now let's go back to our display, now that we've selected the beach balls, and see what we have. Okay, so now we have data points that are really much easier to see. Let's go over to Alaska and see what we have. Okay, and let's view the data from the side to make sure that the depth dimension has been properly taken into account. And the way that we can do that is just by changing the viewpoint here by clicking on one of these viewpoint buttons. Okay, excellent. And it looks like we have some depth data. Now let's go ahead and play the movie. So it looks like we have some data there in the interior of the Earth. Now one of the things that you can do with the IDV is it allows you to filter the data based on some criteria, especially for this point data that we're working with. So let's go ahead and try to do that by again going back to our control. And again, we just need to click on this little link right here. And instead of being in the Layout tab, we need to go to the Filters tab. and I'm going to filter the data based on altitude or depth. And I'm going to select a 
I'm going to filter the, the data based on, on data that's greater than 10 kilometers in depth. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the field that I want to filter on. We're going to choose the greater than symbol to indicate that we're looking for data above a certain depth. And then I'm going to select the value here of minus 10 kilometers. And then in brackets here, I specify the units. OK, let's go ahead and apply this filter and see what we have in the display. All right. So it looks like we were able to filter our data in the depth dimension. Now let's go ahead and play that movie. Excellent. So it looks like we've filtered our data in the depth dimension. OK, so to recap, we loaded up some CSV data that contained some earthquake information. We, we uh, gave it a better layout model so that it was more visible. And we also took care of binning the data in the time dimension so that the time scale is not quite as awkward. And finally, we filtered our data in the depth dimension just to indicate that we can do that in the IDV. OK, I hope that this screen has, that this screencast has been useful to you. And see you next time. For more information about the IDV or Unidata, please visit us at www.unidata.ucar.edu. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions about future screencast topics, please contact us at support-idv at unidata.ucar.edu.